the show where we look at misfires, mistakes, and miscalculations from all throughout history. I'm Tony Southcott. And I'm Albert Berg. And Tony has our bad idea for this week. Tony, what are we talking about? We're going to be talking about Action Park, a water park slash theme park in Vernon, New Jersey. First off, I want to give a shout out to Bad Ideas listener Solo House. I'm guessing that's a, just a username uh, for suggesting the idea. He sent it to our Gmail account, and I very much appreciate it, so thank you for that. Thank you, Solo. Sorry you're doing so bad at the box office right now. Action Park was an amusement at water park located in Vernon, New Jersey, that was notorious for having some of the fastest, craziest, and most intense attractions around. I was just going to say, maybe the next week's bad idea should just be New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, but we have some people that might take offense to that. People we work with very closely. <laughs> Built in the Wild West days of amusement park regulation, Action Park tested the limits of what an amusement park could be. It was essentially if Michael Crichton had written a story about a low-rent water park. I'm not sure he didn't. That dude was prolific. Especially in the park genre. <laughs> yes. Shout out to Westworld. It didn't matter if you were on go-karts that had their governors removed, or on the Cannonball Run, which was a slide with a full-on loop in it. Adrenaline junkies could find their fix at Action Park. This sounds awesome. I know I know where this is going, but I want you to know that I'm I'm still on board. Oh, there's there's a lot of rides that I'm on board for here. Like this is it's a bad idea in so many ways because of the execution, but there's so much cool stuff here at the same time. Which you by can't the way have fun and be safe at the same time. Yes. Yes, that's uh, that's very, very true. You can't, like, you're always putting yourself a little bit at risk for that. Especially, uh, they are making a movie that's loosely based on this right now. It's coming out in a few months. It's called Action Park, starring Johnny Knoxville, who wrote and directed it. It actually looks like it's going to be kind of fun. I look forward to that. The park originally opened in 1978 at the Vernon Valley Ski Resort. Meant as a summer attraction to bring in income during the off-season, it started small with only a pair of water slides, a LOLA racing track and an alpine slide. I don't know what this LOLA is. What does that mean? Lola or LOLA were these really, really fast cars made for racing, and they're pretty cool looking. They, uh, This was something that they charged extra for where you could take these out on a track and just go very, very fast. Like, those weren't go-karts. Those were actual, like, cars, and you could just get out there and fly. Okay. For those of you that don't know what an alpine slide is, an alpine slide is a giant concrete chute that you bobsled down on a fiber fiberglass cart that usually has a lever for a brake. Except at Action Park, many of the carts had no brakes. Okay. Essentially, you were shooting down a mountain at breakneck speeds, trying to stay on during hard turns. In 1984 and 1985, the alpine slide produced 14 fractures and 26 head injuries. The first casualty of the park actually came from the Alpine Slide, where an employee was launched 25 feet off the course, headfirst into a rock. An employee? So was this somebody just riding it for fun, or doing a test drive, or what was this? I couldn't there? find the details on that. I think they were just riding it. There's a lot of uh, a lot of talk that the employees, after hours, would sneak back into the park and just go crazy on the rides. Okay. So I think this is one of those types of instances. Take what safety there might have been off of them and just go even more insane than it already was yeah this seemed to be a recurring theme in that like because it had a microbrewery and a lot of beer involved at the place <laughs> that i uh, led with that sir yeah <laughs> that basically the teenagers working there would come in after hours get drunk and go on the rides so there's a there's a lot of that happening here from every single source i was looking at okay also, the alpine slide went under the chairlift, so people were often hit with loogies from above as they barreled down the course. There were a lot of stories I read that just apparently teenagers in New Jersey were a little bit rude about that, so they were just throwing harassment at everybody going down, dropping stuff on them, spitting on them. It was just not a good situation. The park quickly expanded its attraction, adding a Tarzan swing, which had people swing on a rope into a pond. The pond was so cold that multiple people per day had to be rescued by lifeguards when their bodies would not function upon entering the often snake-filled water. Well, One... now listen, it can't be super cold and snake-filled, because those dudes, they're warm-blooded. So <laughs> That's true. I think that it's I think it's an either-or situation there. Yeah, either I'm... you're going to freeze to death, or in the summer, you're going to get bit by snakes. But probably not both. Well, the snakes apparently didn't often go after the people. Same with the snapping turtles and everything else that were in the pond sections, which were also part of the other like attractions in the water park. A lot of these were actual pools. 
but some of them were just pawns. And this Tarzan swing, it's about a 20 foot drop. It looks like it's a ton of fun. It's just something you're on a ledge, you fling out there, you drop. Standard thing you might see at a, at a random swimming hole or something like that. But the water was just so cold and apparently a lot of people didn't know how to land, so there was a lot of belly flops and things like that, so people were constantly getting dragged out of there. One man hit the water and it was so cold that he immediately froze up and went into cardiac arrest and died in that pool. That one I don't want to put too much blame on Action Park for. Yeah, that's one where they didn't have any sort of liability come out of it. I knew a man who was shrimping and just jumped into the water off of his shrimp boat, and that was it. Seized up. Yep. Good guy. Didn't make it out of the water, though. It so, happens. Yeah. So that one, I would say, is a, one of the more questionable was it actually Action Park's fault, but there's more casualties later, so we'll get to that. Okay. The Action Park Gladiator Challenge came in later. Based on the show <laughs> American Gladiators, Action Park hired bodybuilders to take on guests who wanted to get through the course. This involved jousting and other obstacles, as well as having giant bodybuilders grab you, throw you, do all that sort of thing. This one caused some injuries, but people knew a little more what they were getting into, and it was definitely done for show. Uh, they would sign people up, and you would be able to watch from the audience. So it wasn't just something going all day. It was something that happened like three times a day. While all this was happening, an authentic German brewery was opened on the property. The beer stands were put all over the park. It was well known that they sold to miners, and they never really cut anyone off. This is a big part of the reason why the Vernon Police Department was nearly always on site. Being that the park was mostly overseen by teenagers with summer jobs, they weren't always able to keep the peace. It was said that on the average weekend day, there were more than five fights that broke out in different parts of the park. You know, of all the bad ideas that you've covered so far with the unsafe rides and the cold water and the snakes in the water, the single worst idea I've heard so far is having your park essentially run by teenagers with access to beer. Yeah. And this is a park that requires, like, dexterity and agility to get through a lot of the rides. Adding beer to that is just making it so your reaction time is worse, you're going to be more sloppy, you're going to be missing steps. It's just a bad idea for that. The next segment of the park was known as Motor World. These included go-karts, Lola cars, which are basically open cockpit racing cars that went fast enough that the employees installed them and took them out on Route 94, and a Battle Tanks game. The tank game actually seemed really awesome. You drove a tank that shot tennis balls and tried to disable other tanks. If you hit markers and targets on the other tanks, they would be disabled for 15 seconds. While you were waiting on this ride too, you actually had access to cannons that could shoot at the tanks that were playing and you could disable them too. This became precarious for employees when a tank would break down and need to be pushed out of the arena. The cannons were never disabled so the employees would be pelted with tennis balls. <laughs> okay, that does sound awesome. Yeah, that sounds very much like something that would happen. You've got a free shot. It's like whenever you've got the guy at the driving range driving the cart. It's like everybody's trying to hit that dude. Except it's slightly less deadly because a golf ball will kill you. Yeah, a golf ball Whereas... will kill you and he's in a cage, so it's okay. A tennis ball is just going to leave a little welt. It's, it's probably less than a paintball, I would think. Wait, wait, you can do that experiment, Tony. <laughs> While we're on the subject of tennis balls, it was found that you could shove a tennis ball on the governor of the go-karts, and it would allow them to go much faster than the 20 miles per hour advertised. For those that don't know, a governor is basically a part of an engine that keeps it from going over a certain speed. Most government vehicles have a governor on them, so they can't exceed like 90 miles per hour. And they found a way to hack these by shoving a tennis ball in there and made them go 50 miles per hour. These carts were often bashed into each other, and sometimes even head-on collisions happened. Essentially, they turned go-karts into a 50-mile-per-hour bumper car game. I'm surprised that we haven't mentioned any casualties from this. Yeah. Because that should have killed somebody, or at least seriously fractured something. Yeah, they, that was part of the reason why this was why the park was called Traction Park, because of all the neck and back injuries that happened from rides like these. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Traction Park, Tony. Yep. I like that. Also in Motor World was the speedboat track which, because people had come off the bumper boat ride just a few moments ago, decided that smashing into each other using small speedboats going 35 miles per hour was a good idea. This pond was also snake-infested and pest-infested, and there were multiple reports of capsized boats involving drunk drivers. Somehow the air rides were the safest part of Motor World, as they were standard slingshot and tower drop rides that, were, that most amusement parks had, like Tower of Doom and all those sorts of uh, major ones that you still see around today. Those are terrifying, by the way. I don't know why people do that. <laughs> I went on one of those one time, and that was enough for me. 100, the, the, 100 feet in the air is like a 10-year-old. I was like, I could see the interstate, and I don't want to. 
I think the one of the Eliches is 400 feet. It's it might even. I was, this was Six Flags in like Wisconsin or around Wisconsin. I forget exactly which Six Flags it was in the north. That was my like biggest memory was going up on that drop thing. <laughs> There's one on top of the stratosphere in Las Vegas, which seems terrifying, especially because yeah. it's a rubber banding one that goes up and down a bunch of times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I don't even have that big of a problem with heights, but those ones get me a little bit. The thing that scared me most was the idea, I heard after I got off, that sometimes you'd have people get stuck at the top. Like, for hours. <laughs> yeah, screw that. <laughs> just sitting there, like, it's broken. We're up here. It hasn't broken in a way that will kill us. But if it could break in this way, what happens if it breaks in other ways? Most often they have a really interesting manual brake system that really can't break. Okay. Or so I've been told. I, my lizard brain doesn't really care about that when yeah. I'm several hundred <laughs> feet in the air. Oh, well, anyway, let's get on to the rest of the yes. parks. The most infamous part of the park has to be Waterworld. Now, watching the videos for this, the ride seemed flat out amazing. There was a Colorado River ride that looked like a ton of fun, full of rapids and tunnels. There were roaring rapids that were very similar, but uh, the state of New Jersey reported multiple fractures, concussions, dislocated joints, and torn knees from the ride. Both of these rides actually still exist today, but they've been tamed a little bit. Also, Kevin Costner's not part of them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> little Waterworld movie humor for you guys. There were many giant vertical slides that hit speeds people hadn't seen before at water parks, but the scariest one was the Cannonball Run. This nearly vertical drop sent you careening towards a loop at the bottom where you went in a full 360 degree upside down turn. When testing out the park, the owner offered $100 to any employee that would go. Many refused because the test dummy lost its head when sent through for the first time. You know, they they make those test dummies for a reason. <laughs> so that you can tell if someone's a person is going to lose their head. Andy Mulvihill, son of park owner Eugene Mulvihill, said... There wasn't really any engineering, and the testing was just trial and error. Jim Desay, the director of security at the park, recalls an urban legend-like sto uh, story about whenever they were testing the cannonball loop with the employees. What happened was they sent employees down it. The first one smacked his face and his teeth got knocked out. The second person came out all cut up. They went in, the first guy's teeth had gotten stuck inside, and cut the second guy. Ah! <laughs> we called it a monument to stupidity. Is this true? He, he, claims it, he claims it was true. The people that were writing about it said that it was an urban legend. <sighs> I found numerous uh, accounts from people that had actually gone on the ride. Almost everyone that went on the ride just came out of it holding their back or holding, uh, holding the back of their head because they would always end up smacking their head on something. There were also a lot of people who got stuck in the loop, so they had to cut open and put in a port at the top of the slide so that they could pull people out who didn't make it through. So you'd just be stuck there with water rushing all around you. And in the dark, I assume, too. Yes, in the dark, because this was a closed slide. Yeah. <laughs> the Cannonball Run was only open during the summer of 1985, though they attempted some simple fixes in the following years. It would never fully open to the public again. So they did have some safety constraints there. They shut it down? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> We're going to stop doing the thing that might kill you with other people's teeth. The next casualty that actually happened at the park is one that was on one of the more tame rides. This one was kind of an odd accident. They had a simple kayak lazy river type ride where you could just get in a kayak and they had these underwater fans to agitate the water to make some slight rapids. And one person flipped their kayak and while they were reaching out, they ended up grabbing a live, a live wire underwater and it ended up shocking them or electrocuting them. Why was there a live wire just hanging out uninsulated underwater? That seems like a bad idea. Yeah, well... The tidal wave pool, though, is the one that has the most casualties associated with it. It was incredibly dangerous. It would run for 20 minutes and be off for 10, but people often, often found themselves exhausted or in much deeper waters than they expected. One of the things they said that was most dangerous about this park is that they would advertise to uh, to Latino populations, that, and a lot of them didn't speak English, so any of the warnings, they didn't have translations for them, and a lot of people couldn't swim. So they would walk out into this, and it seems nice and even, and you're going down, and it's, uh, so most people are able to stand in it, but then all of a sudden these 40-inch waves keep coming up, and people just get completely overwhelmed, and they get sucked back from the riptide. And just back and forth and back and forth. And on the average summer day, there were more than 30 people that had to be rescued out of these pools every single day. 
how is it even worth it at that point to pay people to to stop the machine and pull people out? I don't know. I don't even know if they actually, like, stopped the machines or if people just had to, like, jump in and get them. They had 12 lifeguards on duty for this one pool. How, yeah, that's what I'm saying. you pay, you got to pay each one of those guys, like, well, at the time, probably 5 or $6 an hour. But still, that's... That's a lot of outlay every single day just to keep people from dying in this pool that they're probably not paying that much to get into. Yeah, but it was also a giant pool that could hold a thousand people. That sounds almost... That's horrifying. That's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> to, if you're surrounded by a thousand people, what are the odds that somebody's going to see you go under? Well, that's what happened in three... Uh, three people ended up drowning in the pool. So, like, that one was the one that got the single most amount of casualties, and that would just go on for a while. That pool actually still exists today, but the way they fixed it is they made the waves a little bit less high, and they made the pool less deep. They also said that one of the major things that would happen is that whenever the waves started and people would start getting tired, they'd crowd around the elevators. Or not the elevators, the ladders. So you'd have somebody that's, like, partially holding onto a ladder, and then they'd just get slammed into it over and over and over again. There was a lot of bad things that could happen in that wave pool. The park would go on to average more than 330 reported injuries per summer. Enough injuries that they bought new ambulances for the city of Vernon and set up a direct connection with a doctor for a sort of urgent care center. Also, at the bottom of some of the rides, they had what they called a healing potion. I can't believe we used it, actually, Thomas Flynn, who worked at the first aid park, said. It was 70% alcohol and 10% iodine. Imagine spraying 70% alcohol on a rug burn. We'd spray these dudes down and take bets on who would do the craziest dance. They'd run out of the first aid tent like we had set them on fire. And people kept coming. Yeah, like uh, the, these rug birds that they were talking about, they seemed to mostly come from slides that would all of a sudden just not have quite enough water. So you'd just skid across like a, a fiberglass surface for a while after you were going like 30 miles an hour down a chute. So just awful, awful rug birds. Action Park was on the bleeding edge of attractions, and many of their ideas would be copied later. The problem was that most of the designers were not truly engineers and didn't understand physics well enough to make the attractions safe. There was also a major lack of regulation in New Jersey at the time. Things like, since the wave pool was considered a pool, not an attraction, the only requirements were clean water and lifeguards on duty. Rules like that helped Action Park avoid liability, especially because they they often didn't carry liability insurance. Wow. So they could just get out of it by saying, well, it's not illegal. Yeah, like that basically people consented to being there, so it's not our fault. In 1996, the park would close, but only due to financial reasons. They declared bankruptcy and ownership was passed along between several groups. They couldn't afford all those lifeguards. Yeah. The park reopened in 1998 and was focused on safety. It still had some extreme rides, but the fatalities vanished and the injuries slowed down a lot. The Mulvihill family, who originally owned the park, purchased it again in the uh, mid-2010s and currently operated under the name Mountain Creek Water Park. Now rides are focused entirely on safety and they're still trying to push limits. They are currently developing the Sky Caliber, which is a 90-foot drop that is nearly vertical that puts you through a 30-foot loop. This time, you're braced in a cage that that keeps you safe. Basically, you're entirely strapped in. It's more like a roller coaster that has some water uh, elements to it. And they've been talking about this since 2016, but it's still, even though it's built, they haven't opened it yet. So I'm thinking that that might just still be a pipe dream of theirs. Literally. Yeah. (laughs) But there's still a lot of cool stuff here. Like, they've got cliff diving into, like, a 16-foot pool. They've got amazing-looking slides. They've got a wave pool that's actually a lot of fun. If you go and look at the Mountain Creek website now... It looks like it's an amazing place to go. I would recommend checking out some of the videos from the 70s and 80s on this park because you could see all the times where people are getting stuck and having to climb out. And I think one of the main reasons why there were so many injuries, like if you go to a water park now, the lifeguard is like making sure that people are like 20 seconds in front of you, 30 seconds in front of you. It was just like nonstop people, 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 people. So you get somebody at the bottom, then you'd have two people land on top of them and it was just a crazy mess. So they did a lot of things that actually worked towards safety. Uh, And it was just common sense stuff, like not letting people go in in certain ways and uh, having slides that weren't quite as intense. The thing is, I'm hearing about this, and I know rationally that this is all just terrible stuff. But I also know that there is a certain cachet in being the park where somebody died. Yeah. Yeah. And if you, to be the, the extreme park where there's actually a little bit of danger to the rides, that's actually going to get a lot of people excited. Especially the teenager demographic. There is 
there is a certain segment of the population that's like, you want to go on the roller coaster that a guy died on last week? <laughs> and that's actually something I've written later. Like uh, for a lot of people in New Jersey, this became sort of a rite of passage to go to the park. Didn't matter if you had a, a bone broken or anything like that. You had to go on these rides and it was just considered part of growing up. There are so many bad ideas here. Not having good people design rides is probably the main one, but taking your kids to the park is also up there, especially because the park was advertised for kindergarten and up. Overall, hundreds of thousands of people made it out of the park without bodily injury, and the reputation of accident park or class action park or traction park should have been enough to dissuade people who weren't ready. I am encouraged, however, to see that the park has turned it around and that they've made themselves into a park that still pushes the limits, but in a way that isn't actually hurting people near as much as they used to. There are, like The fatalities haven't been reported in a long time, and it, it seems like it's actually just a fun place to go now, with maybe a risk of a little bit of injury. Like the Colorado River ride I was telling you about, now you have to wear like a football helmet, basically, to, to ride on that thing. Because it's still pretty extreme, but they're trying to make it so you're not going to get a concussion from it. Don't forget all the ghosts there, too, now. Yeah, yeah, especially in that guys. wave pool. Yes, they're just reaching for your feet. I, I would not doubt if there's some sort of, uh, like, rumors about that or stories about people being, like, pulled under or something like that. I'd like to point out also the bad water park theme park thing that hasn't been very well designed is still happening today with other parks. Uh, there is a park in Texas called Schlitterbahn that just recently ch the owner was charged with, uh, I guess, manslaughter because one of the water slides that he quote unquote designed killed a kid. And it turns out he has no experience designing roller coasters or water attractions or anything he just oh i'm sure he played some sim theme park back in the day roller coaster I don't know, tycoon this guy looks like he's maybe a little too old for that <laughs> anyway that's gonna do it for bad ideas this week thank you so much for the suggestion for that hit us up at bad ideas show at gmail.com if you have suggestions or on our social media at human echoes we'd love to hear from you We'd love to get your suggestions for bad ideas. If you enjoy this show, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash human echoes. $2, $5, $10 a month helps us a ton, and it gets you lots of awesome stuff like pins, postcards, and so much more. We'll see you next week. Take Bye, care, everybody.